So good evening and welcome to the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada Victoria Centre in our monthly meeting for September. Uh, before we get to our, uh, our special guest speaker for tonight, we do have a short business section to get through, so bear with us because this is a kind of requirement of our monthly meetings. Uh, so for my report, as usual, my usual bleakings are in the, uh, in the sky news if you need to read those. Um, so we'll go straight to our treasurer's report. My name is Bruce Lane, your treasurer. <coughs> Currently our members count stands at $9,783 and our gaming at $749. More is coming from National to reimburse us for some of our uh, earlier purchase over the summer. Also I'd like to announce that the first of the Rascals of Cattle Point event will be held on October 7th at 7.30 p.m. It's a Friday near the quarter moon. We'll be going out to the old stomping grounds of this organization when they went out to do their observing as a group of at Cattle Point, which is a designated group of Star Park. We'll set up our telescopes and we'll go from there. The weather's bad. I just won't be there because I don't want to drive from North Sandy. There'll be updates on Facebook and follow our group. And if, if I cut you a check in the next week or so, uh, which you should try to take expenses out of, make sure you cash those checks before the end of the month, because it is our year end at the end of the month. So it kind of messes things up if you cash them too late. And that's pretty much it. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Um, Les? No report. No report? I don't see Michelle here, so nothing really for the second vice president's report. Uh, membership, Chris. So our current membership stands at 236, and there are 13 people who are on the um, grace period membership, meaning their membership expired at the end of one of the previous two months. So I think that's almost a high point for us. <laughs> 236, that's yeah. as high as I ever remember, yeah? yeah. And just in case any of our visitors tonight um, have any questions about us or have the, uh, the urge to join for whatever reason, um, we meet after the meeting um, at the Astronomy Lounge in the Elliott Building, so you're welcome to come up with us whether you remember or not. And if you have any questions about us, that's a great time to, uh, to come up and ask. Sky News, right. Hello everyone. Um, in case you haven't read the Sky News, there's three articles of, uh, in, in this article. One is to deal with the, uh, I attempted to document the epic uh, outreach activities involving the Star Party. And there's quite a few pictures there. You, want to, you might check that out and see if you, you made it in. Uh, at the very back of the, uh, near the back of the magazine, I've got a lovely article that was uh, submitted by uh, Diane Bell, and she conveys the joy that she experienced when she was um, at a couple of star parties, and that might inspire you to break out your scope and have a look. And sandwiched between those two, it started out as an article on astrophysics, but it, it uh, degenerated into uh, a story that illustrated the perils that you give bright, talented women access to a telescope. Uh, these people made a fundamental discovery and uh, turned astrophysics upside down, and uh, we've been in a darker place ever since. <laughs> but anyway, have a look. And I, I have a limited number of hard copies if you like one. Thank you. Thanks, Rich, and thanks for another really, really great issue. Um, so a quick update on the Star Party and the Chosen. Uh, for those who hadn't heard, we had just the most amazing evening the first night. It was just, it couldn't have been more perfect. It was 20 degrees at midnight on the field. There was not a breath of wind. The sky was clear. It was absolutely amazing. For the whole weekend, we had about 73 people, kind of a mix of uh, RSC members and the public show up. And then on Saturday, Starting at about noon, the wind came up, blew all the chairs off the stage, threatened to tear the screen off the wall. Poor David tried to give his presentation in the afternoon, is battling like 50 knot winds or something. It's just brutal. And then just in time for our evening lecture, the winds died down, the clouds rolled in. <laughs> that was it. 
So I think apart from a couple sucker holes here and there, we didn't see anything the second night. But it was great. We gave away a lot of great stuff in our door prizes, and people came despite the wind and the clouds on the second night. So I think in all in all, we can call it a, a pretty good success, even though we only had like one night of actual good, good observing. And so we get to do it all again next year. We'll start making plans for next year already. Um, we don't have a public outreach um, in effect right now, but Sid, how about the schools? Uh, I don't have any report at this time because we are just starting uh, getting requests from the schools, so we don't have any positive things to report at the time. Any um, first, uh, first visits to schools yet? Yeah, there will be school visits and uh, there's some change in curriculum, but uh, we are trying to find out how we are going to accommodate the new school system. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, summer Saturdays, well, you can see the numbers. I mean, we have 13, 13 public outreach events at the observatory this year that was up five from last year. And you can see the totals are pretty good, that 13 nights, 2,221 visitors all together. Uh, and 1,450 volunteer hours, that's like you guys. Um, they come to see you. I mean, sure, the, the observatory, the facilities are nice, the Plotsky, the Square, the planetarium is nice, but what really makes it special are you guys are volunteers um, at you know, 1,450 hours over the course of 13 nights in the summer is, is no small fee. Uh, and I'm sure your spouses and significant others are kind of happy to have you back now, but thank you very much for, for doing that. I mean, the, the feedback I get by email and, and the comments I heard on the Hill uh, was absolutely amazing, just absolutely outstanding work by, uh, by uh, the volunteers from RASC and friends of the uh, DAO. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, it would never work, so thank you all very much for that. And we're starting it all over again for next year. As I said, we just, same with the, the star party. We start making plans pretty much when the first one's over. So we're already thinking about next year. So we'll be calling you to try and volunteer again. And Joe, website. No report. No report? Okay, is Matt here? No. No Matt, so okay. So no tech committee. Um, we'll be sending out the official notice for our annual general meeting shortly, but just so you're aware, it's going to be at the Cedar Hill Golf Course again this year. Um, they, stopped, um, they stopped catering about three years ago or so, and it was a really great venue. The room is really nice, um, food was great, but they stopped their catering. And uh, I think it was Joe that, that kind of alerted us to that uh, they've done catering again. So. We called them up and went and had a visit, and they were really easy to work with. It'll be $37.50 per person. Um, we'll be sending out the menu and the details uh, pretty soon. But it'll be November 27th, that's a Sunday, and it'll be 6 p.m. Um, at the Cedar Hill Golf Course. So watch for the, uh, the official notice coming up soon. And Lori. Um, hello, I'm Lori Roche, and I'm being what is called a national rep. Uh, so I am the person who is um, uh, being a, a go-between between the national organization, which is in Toronto, and, uh, and Victoria. Uh, we sometimes seem to be very far out in the far west, <laughs> uh, kind of going off the edge, but, uh, but we have a, a, a great um, uh, a, a great group here that, uh, and the national knows that. And we're, we're, we're going to, uh, going to some, uh, in Toronto as well. Uh, so I just want to let you know that uh, just this past weekend, the national board met and uh, has been have worked on almost exclusively worked on the strategic plan and the priorities for the national organization for about the next three years. So that's what they were they were working on. And when we were in London, Ontario, where the last meeting was, we had um, we were trying to come up with ideas for what would be best for the national organization to be able to work with uh, members, to be able to work uh, with uh, the science the science organizations that we that we um, pair with, like the National Research Council, and then and then how do we also work with the public? And, um, and, and so we were working at what are the priorities that we want to come up with, and 
Uh, and so the national board, of which where's Chris Kane? Oh, Chris just walked in. Oh my goodness, Chris just walked in. Uh, Chris was out as at that meeting, and um, and if anybody wants to have any more information about what's going on, Chris would be the person to to speak to, as uh, he is our uh, one of our vice presidents of the at the national um, at the national level. Um, so the next the next big uh, national meeting is going to be in Ottawa. Um, on exactly the day of the 150th anniversary of Ottawa, of, of, of Ottawa Canada. So it will be on July 1st, and it's over that week, the long weekend, the July long weekend, and they are planning a whole bunch of really, very, really neat activities to do. They'll be on the hill on, on Canada Day. Um, and uh, so if anybody is thinking about going to going to a national, uh, a national meeting, this one I would suggest would be one to be able to, to see and to do lots of things going on um, with that. Um, if anybody uh, would like any more information about some of the publications that the national organization puts out, our journal and our bulletin and Sky News, um, please just see me afterwards and I'll be happy to talk to you about any of that. Thanks. Anything, sorry. Any new business? Any questions or? Yes. Nelson? Uh, my name is Nelson Walker and I'm a past president of, of uh, the center here. And, and as such, I am charged with the responsibility of putting to, assembling a slate of, of <laughs> officials and uh, officers of the club for, uh, uh, for the next year. And this slate will be voted on at the AGM. And I, I, uh, I'm going to be sending out an email shortly to the membership, setting out the positions that are available and uh, and the and the procedure that you would follow if you're interested in becoming a candidate, or just stepping into one of these positions. And I urge you to uh, please take a look at that. We're uh, we have kind of an unusual slate of officers we've had for the last couple of years and because we've had some people leave and some people uh, uh, because of other commitments can't follow through on sort of this uh, stairway to the uh, to the presidency and vice presidency and secretary treasurer of the club we are in a bit of a jam and we find ourselves probably this year trying to fill a couple of positions for vice presidents that sort of thing so uh, take a look at, at what I send out, and I urge you to please, if you have any interest at all in what you see there, give me a call and we can talk about it. My telephone number and my email address are on, on the website. Thank you. Thanks, Nelson. Can you do that something? I was at the Salvation Army the other day, and I saw a box of these... Uh, Red lights, and I thought the uh, astronomers would really like those. So they're eight dollars each. I'm just trying to make my money back. It's got two modes. It's got a flash mode and a, a strong red light. So I don't know if any of you are interested. I brought 14. I sold eight or six at the uh, Astro Cafe the other day. So just in case you uh, want them, there's strong red light for breaking down. It's got magnets on the back that probably stick on your back, your tailgate. So if you're interested, I'm right here. Sorry. Sorry, I did forget. Um, I did forget one thing. Uh, the um, the RESC puts out a calendar every year, and it is uh, the calendar is uh, uh, from from some of the the people who do astrophotography all across Canada, um, and it is out now and available uh, at, on the website. But um, if we buy in bulk, we can get a really good price. <laughs> Much better than if you bought it individually and tried to get it yourself and have it shipped uh, from Toronto. Um, so if um, if you would like one, uh, would you just let me know and we'll we'll start to get a list going of people that would like to. I think I probably will order about thirty. That seems to be a, about a, a good round number. Um, yes. If you have a blank, it's a paper you can pass around tonight. Okay. Okay, and people can just put it on. And I would think, I would think that the that it, it probably would be around the fifteen dollar mark for the calendar, uh, possibly even a little bit less. 
if you tried to buy it on, online, you'd be up into the $26, $27 range. So, uh, so they're really they're nice. They've got nice big spaces. And they've got lots of astronomical data on them, too. So it's kind of good. I'll, I will. I'll, I'll, start a, I'll start a page and just simply pass that around. If anybody would like to, um, would like to order one, uh, we'll get you one. All right, any other new business, questions, comments from anyone?